beautiful day in home, isn't it, neighbor? Just like every day before today and every day after. But something about today is a little different. Our Sally Starlet might describe it as a spine-tingling, bone-chilling, and hair-raising sort of day. The sort of day her dear friend Poppy Partridge always dreaded, even as she helped prepare for the celebration. Yes, that's right. It was Sally's favorite holiday, the macabre menagerie of monstrous mischief-making. A monumental mouthful, if you ask me. But we've had our time talking. Let's peer into Poppy's window to hear about it for ourselves. Oh, I just can't believe it, Poppy. Darling, you've produced such a dazzling and decadent display. Thank you again for letting me use your... Uh, not so humble abode for my macabre menagerie of monstrous mischief making festivities. Sally carefully placed down the assorted treats on the table. Some even looked like our neighbors. They ought to make one for the narrator, though. Why, of course, dear. It's so lovely to help you with your, um, well, macabre. Uh, oh my. My macabre menagerie of monstrous mischief making, Poppy. Uh, right. Does it have to be monstrous? Poppy, horror is the backbone of the macabre menagerie of monstrous mischief-making. It is integral to what makes thespians, such as myself, able to convey true terror on stage. Everyone in home simply must experience such a sensation for themselves. So today, everyone will be adorning elaborate ensembles outside of their repetitious apparel and become symbols of pure horror. Oh, but you're dressed as a clown. Sally was dressed like a clown. If everyone is going as something they are not, then I must do so in turn. A director does not leave her actors to fend for themselves. So I arrived as Pedrolino. Pedrolino, for those of you who don't know, is from the Commedia dell'arte. Oh, please, dear narrator, of course they have. Of course. Poppy bristled her feather and sighed gently. Uh, I'm not quite sure I see the appeal, but I suppose... Then look with your fantastic feathered soul, Poppy. There is more to understanding horror than sight alone. More than sight alone? <laughs> Why, of course. A foul stench, a chill running down your spine, a sour taste in your mouth, an unexpected knock at your door. That must be our esteemed guest. I'll get it! As Poppy returned to fretting and fawning, Sally walked over to the front door to let in the guests. When she opened the door, it revealed... Why, none other than our good friends Wally Darling and Barnaby B. Beagle. Wally was dressed in a devilish outfit, while Barnaby was dressed as... as a werewolf. That's where Beagle do, pal. Welcome, one and all. Oh, speak of the devil. Hi, Sally. I'm a little devil. We're here for the... The... Um... We're here for terror and treats. Now, where's the punchline start? Terror and <laughs> treats? What is that? That's not what my extravaganza is called. Oh, yeah. The invitation said it was, uh... Macaroni, macrame, marmalade mousse. I ain't saying all of that. I think Darren Treats is better. It's got a little genie sais quoi Th to it. That's je ne sais quoi. You, oh, you beast. That's Mr. Wear Beagle to you, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I beast be getting a glass of punch. Come on, little devil. Okay. I like puns. Wally and Barnaby made their way around Sally, who scoffed angrily at Barnaby's joke. Uh. It wasn't long before another knock was heard at the door. When Sally opened it this time, she revealed Julie Joyful and Frank Frankly. Julie was dressed as a witch, and Frank was dressed as a vampire. But they also brought a third guest, a tomato encased in red gelatin. Yeah. Franklin Juliet. That's not my name. What a dashing couple you two make. Wonderfully witchy and vivaciously vampirific. Ghoulish greetings, Sally. Sally. <laughs> We're so excited to be 
yet your magnificently marvelous, majestically mystifying, macabre menagerie of momentously monstrous mischief-making celebration! Yes, and I've brought tomato gelatin. See? There's a whole one inside. Uh, so you have. How terribly frightful. Thank you. I like your clown costume, Sally. A uh, clown? It's Petrolino! Wiggly worms and giggly grins! Watch out, party goers! Frank and Julie's coming in! Hey! A witch and a guy with a cape brought more eats! I'm a vampire. The gelatin is for looks only, too. I better not see a bite taken out of it. Sally could only shake her head before one final set of knocks rang through the party. It was finally our friends Eddie Deer and Howdy Pillar. Eddie looked quite elaborate with his costume as Frankenstein's monster, while Howdy... Howdy wore a bedsheet. Presumably he's a ghost. I worked hard, too. You ever tried to use four scissors at once? Oh, please. Reusing the same ghost costume from last year, Howard said. I resent that implication. Last year's sheet was off-white. This year's is eggshell white. And look... Wiggle room for the fellas. Oh, he's right. Of course. And what are you, mailman? What are you uh, supposed to be? <clears throat> uh, I, I'm, you know, that book with a fella who got brought back from the dead by the scientist. Um, I, I worked real hard on this. You know, he's got stitches, a, a deathly pallor, a bit of moral conundrum. Yes, yes, of course, mailman. Uh. Now come in, you two. We're just about to begin the festivities, and you're our last guest. Why well, don't I feel special? Almost makes it worth closing the store early. Is that my favorite regular over there? Gangway! Oh, I like your Pedrolino costume, Sally. You know, just the other day when it was real slow in the post office, I was doing some reading about the Commedia dell'arte, and I just think it's just... Oh, did Frank bring one of those fancy molds again? That's right, he did. Now, just come along inside. Oh, that Eddie could talk. Sally ushered him inside with the others before closing the door behind her. Everyone had made it just in time for the festivities and the scariest part of the day. It was time for the telling of terrific tall tales. The neighbors gathered together in a circle on the floor, just as Sally announced story time with a flashlight in her hand. All right, all right, everyone. I certainly hope you've all brought your own terror-filled tall tales for tonight's macabre menagerie of monstrous mischief-making. Tall tales? <laughs> I'd only brought one of them, and it's right behind me. It looks more like a short tale to me, Barnaby. Oh, behave, you two. Now, would anyone like to go first? Oh, oh, me, 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 me! scary story that'll make your ears ring with fear. <laughs> Julie waved her hand up excitedly and... What? Was that thunder? It, it, it's a beautiful day outside. Of course, Juliet. The stage is all yours. Julie took the flashlight with a smile and stood before the other neighbors, putting on her spookiest voice. It was a dark and blistery night. Or maybe it was a really nice and sunny day. I can't remember. Maybe it was a little rainy in the morning and sunny in the afternoon. Who's keeping track anyways? You're keeping track. You're telling the story. Oh, that's right. Anyways, and on that beautiful, horrifying, dark, sunny day night, a squirrel walked by and... Ah! Julie let out a scream. It only scared Eddie, though. What was that? I told you. It's scary and spooky. It's my scary, spooky story. Mm -hmm. uh, Juliet, that, that's hardly a... And then the squirrel leaned over and he saw... <laughs> Julie let out another scream. Oh, Eddie. All right, all right. I'm putting a stop to this terrifying train. Uh, I, I don't know. I thought it was pretty darn scary, if you ask me. I mean, we don't even know what that squirrel was up to. I don't like it. Hey, I'm not sure if it's bone chilling, but I've got one that'll tickle your funny bones for sure. No! Now you listen here. But it was too late. Barnaby took the flashlight from Julie's hands and held it up to his muzzle like he was holding a microphone. So, 
What did a vampire, a zombie, and a ghost say when they walked into a bar? They said, ouch! Except for the ghost. He says it went right to him! <laughs> 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 That is not a tall tale. In fact, it was incredibly short. That's what I said. Bon, you know I like your style, but I think everyone is bone tired of the stand-up. So maybe you ought to sit down and give Howdy a crack at it. I've got a real antenna shaker for you. <sighs> Finally, someone with a tall tale worth trembling over. I'm not sure about this one. You all better believe it, Sal. So there I was, at the counter of Howdy's Place, the home of everything you need and everything you don't, by the way, just minding the shop, wiping down the counters as I do, admiring the array of wonderful products that you too can purchase and enjoy. I think we ought to save the advertisements for television, Howdy. You all don't know what you're missing. Ahem. Anyways... Out of the corner of my eye, there I saw it. A terrifyingly good deal, left unpurchased. Sitting on my shelf, taking up valuable real estate. Oh, oh my stars. Not an efficient use of shelf space. Don't I know it. But it had been there for weeks. I'm moving, lowering in value, lowering in price. It had to be clearanced! First 10%, then 20%, 30, 40, 50, 60, until finally it happened. <gasps> no! That's right! Not 75, not 85, not even 95! This must have item was locked down 100%! No! <laughs> you... Can't be serious. As serious as a heart attack. I was practically giving it away. But what was the buy of the century left unbought? I'm dying to know. It was the very sheet I'm wearing. Oh, I knew it. Available now for only, for only a hundred percent off. Barnaby patted Howdy on the back as the caterpillar <laughs> sheared pride into his shoulders. Maybe these stories are starting to get scary. Sally, may I tell a story? Oh, Bolivar, go right ahead. I suppose I don't see the harm, seeing how everyone else's stories have been, uh, lacking. Okay. I'm going to tell my story now. Wally stood up in front of the rest of the neighbors as Julie had, and a hush fell over everyone. He held the flashlight, but it... it, it it's upside down. Barnaby, could you turn that right... Oh, okay, thank you. Wally held the flashlight under his face as he began his terrifying tale. Yesterday, I went on a walk. I saw a kite. Stuck inside of a tree. When I kept walking, I saw Barnaby. He was practicing his ball balancing tricks. Then I saw Eddie delivering the mail to Poppy's house. Oh, I almost forgot. I also saw a bug sitting on a leaf. It reminded me of Frank. After that, I turned around and went home. And what part of that story is supposed to be scary? Oh, I don't know if it was scary. I had a nice day. Well... I liked the part in your story about the bug, Wally. Thank you, Frank. Oh, that was it! A quiet fell over the neighbors once more, but this time to watch Sally fume! 
She was shining brightly, getting more frustrated by the second as she tried to collect herself. Must I really show you all what the true meaning of terror is? The macabre menagerie of monstrous mischief-making is all about thrills and chills and the fear of what goes bump in the night. Oh, eh, that might have been me. It was time for my bedtime snack. No. Oh. You'll all be quivering with fright at my tall tale. Sally snatched the flashlight out of Wally's hands and aimed it underneath her face. Everyone leaned in close to hear. Have you ever wondered why it is we stay indoors every night? To get a beauty rest? So we sing each other goodnight on the phone before bed? Oh, so we can sort our stamps. What? No, sometimes. And, and no. It is because this town is rumored to have visitors at night. Something from deep within the forest, far beyond the hills and mountains. No one knows what it wants or where it's going. Just that it is persistent. Just that it arrives here. So many stories have risen about their origins. But I know what it is searching for. 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 Searching, 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 However, on rare instances, it will find itself with an appetite left unsatisfied by its aimless wandering. Even the occasional unfortunate insect that has crossed its path is not enough. Those who have lived through the night say it isn't quiet about it either. They always say you can hear when it gets closer to you. Do you know what sound it makes? I hear it every night. You can hear it too, if you listen. Especially if you wait next to your window. First, there's rustling in the bushes. Then, the scratching on the pavement. On the walls, as it crawls up. Finally, if you're quiet, you can hear its guttural sound. Oh, oh boy! Oh, that had me jump up too! Now that was scary! Just like that, the macabre menage. Uh, Terror and Treat Nights was a success for Sally and the neighbors of home! Who knew Poppy dressed as a pumpkin with a platter of caramel apples was the scariest part of the night? Oh, certainly not me. Oh, would you care for an apple, dear? Oh, yes, thank you. To all of you out there on this terror and treats night, eat plenty, be merry, and be careful. You never know what will come rustling and scratching into the night. Happy haunting! And don't forget to wave up high. <laughs> It certainly make one swell store sale, that's for sure. I can't even imagine how much a puppy that size would sell for. Did somebody say puppy? Well, I am young at heart. 
No, 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 no. Fit. You're not going anywhere. We haven't even gotten into the cultural importance of Commedia dell'arte. Oh, Sally, you're killing me. So much Gavin, just to explain why you're dressed like a clown. Come to think of it, I should have known earlier. You do look a bit funny to me. Oh, Mama B. She's much more complex than that. She's a... Uh, Gavin's favorite. Uh, Pinocchio. Or, or was it Pistachio? Uh, I think you might be thinking of Pedrolino. See? Even the mailman gets it. Well, of course I do. Wait, is that supposed to be an insult? Oh, yes. Yes, you can. Check out my little apple. And I don't mean Wally. But you know what? I also mean Wally. Hey, how's my little devil doing over here? You guard my apple for me, pal. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess you didn't do a very good job at it. Hey! Who took a bite out of my apple? I think I see fang marks, Frank. These fangs aren't real and you know. Sure, sure. That's what they all say. Don't worry, though, kid. There's plenty of other eats here. What are you feeling hungry for, Wally? <laughs> <laughs> 